Welcome to the first episode of the Lightburn for Gantry Crash Course. In this series, we'll be discussing everything from A to Z when it comes to Lightburn and how it works with your Gantry laser. But today we're getting started with downloading, installing, and activating Lightburn, as well as connecting your machine to Lightburn. Now to get going with your CO2 or diode, or any gantry style laser that's compatible with Lightburn, the first thing we're going to want to do is go and download the software. Go ahead and go to lightburnsoftware.com. If you haven't had Lightburn before, there's no harm in starting with downloading and using the trial. You're not limited in any way for the first 30 days you have it installed, and once that 30 days is up, all you have to do is activate it. If you're ready to buy or activate, you're going to want to go under the online store drop-down where you'll find Buy Lightburn. That's where you can purchase any of the licenses that go along with Lightburn. At this time when purchasing Lightburn, you'll see options for purchasing the base version of Lightburn, which includes Gerbil style controllers. You'll also see DSP style controller support, which is an add-on to the base version. And you'll also see Galvo which is also an add-on to the base version. At least in terms of what we're working with in this series, we're only going to be discussing Gerbil and DSP controllers. Within the download and trial area, we're going to find a couple different versions of Lightburn. You're going to have to pick the one that best suits your needs. In my case, I've gone with Windows 64-bit, however you may find that you only have a 32-bit version of Windows, in which case you have an option there. There's also versions for Mac and Linux at this time. You'll see me going forward with the Windows 64-bit version. After clicking on the version of the software that you wish to proceed with, you'll see a prompt pop up noting the download of the software on either the top right or bottom left. You may be prompted to proceed with the download or it may just proceed automatically. Once it's downloaded, we can either launch it from within the browser here or we can go to the Downloads folder within Windows, and you'll be welcomed with the first page of the installer for Lightburn. You can choose to create a desktop icon, and then we can proceed. It's going to denote what it's going to proceed with, and we can hit Next, and then it will let you know that it's going to start the install. Now, one of the most missed sections of the setup wizard when installing Lightburn is the opportunity for installing additional drivers. Now whether you're working with a Galvo in the future or a DSP controller, those are things that need to be added on here. So be sure to select the check marks that apply to you. In this case, I'll be proceeding with the additional DSP driver installation. If you do not have a CO2 laser that uses a DSP controller, you can proceed with just launching Lightburn. Now if you do need to install the DSP drivers, you'll receive an additional prompt pop-up. It's going to walk you through the installation. All you have to do is follow the steps and proceed through the next options, and it'll extract that driver into Windows for you so that your laser can speak to your computer. Once any additional driver installations are complete, Lightburn should go ahead and launch for you. Now on first launch, you will be asked if you wish to proceed with activation or if you want to proceed with a trial. There will also be links to go ahead and purchase an activation key if you need to do so. If you purchase an activation key for any of the versions of Lightburn or the add-ons, that key is usually emailed to you with a receipt. Within that email receipt, you should see an activation key and that's what you can paste into this box and then activate. For the time being, I'm going to proceed with the trial for demonstration purposes. Now once we're done activating or starting a trial for Lightburn, we're going to go ahead and want to get Lightburn talking to one of our devices. On the bottom right of Lightburn, we're going to locate the Laser tab, and within that tab we're looking for the Devices button. This is where we're going to go ahead and add any of our lasers. You'll see that I already have some devices here added from a prior installation of Lightburn, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new laser. We have two options. We can either use Find My Laser or Create Manually. For today's purposes, I'm going to use Find My Laser. If your laser is offline or it's not reachable right now, you can go ahead and proceed with the Manual Edition. Now, when using the Find My Laser option, it's important to have your laser plugged in both to the USB and power and turned on. That's going to allow the controller on the laser to speak to Lightburn. Once your laser is connected and turned on, 
we're going to go ahead and hit next and allow it to scan for devices. Now you'll see in this case it popped up with two different DSP controlled devices. I don't have two CO2 lasers at this time plugged in. The controller is coming up with two different connection types and that's normal, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and select one and we're going to add it. You're then going to be prompted to name the laser. In terms of naming it doesn't have to be super critical, however it should be used to help identify which laser you're working with. I'm going to name it something so I know it's my CO2 laser. Once we're done naming our laser, we're going to set or confirm our size for our gantry laser. In many cases, the controller helps identify what that is. We're moving on to tell Lightburn where the laser homes. In my case, I know my CO2 laser homes to the rear left because of where my homing switches are. That might be different depending on your model of laser. So you may have to refer back to the documentation or the sale listing for your device. Reach out to the manufacturer, or if all else fails, you can of course reach out to one of our communities either on the Discord, the Facebook, or the LMA. Our community is vast, between everyone we have lots of machines, and we're all very happy to help each other out. And then we're all set. Our laser is now added. Now that's my CO2 laser added to Lightburn. What I'm going to go ahead and do is add my Atom Stack laser as well. The process is very much the same. We're going to go ahead and use Find My Laser in this case. Again, once we make sure that the laser is plugged in and turned on, we're going to hit Next to enable the search. In this case, it located my Atom Stack Gerbil laser. And again, I also want to point out that the device info also shares the gantry size. So we're going to go ahead and hit Add Device and we're going to go ahead and name it something so we know what we're working with and we're going to set it to home. Now something I didn't discuss as part of adding my CO2, when you have limit switches you can enable auto home on startup. Now if you do this and you don't have limit switches, the laser doesn't know when to stop when homing the laser. There's nothing to tell it to stop. So if you turn off your machine, it doesn't remember where the laser head is. And when you turn it on and it goes to move to home, if the switches don't click to let the laser controller know that it's home, it's going to keep turning and it's going to run that laser head right into the first thing it hits and the motors are going to want to keep turning. So if you don't have limit switches, we don't want to enable auto home on laser startup. We can manually move it home when the laser is off and then when we turn it on, we know that the laser is homed and the software assumes that the laser is homed. Now, if Lightburn doesn't see that your laser is connected when doing this, and you've ensured that it's both connected to USB and powered on, you can go to the device manager and make sure that your computer is identifying the hardware correctly. What we'll do to confirm this is go to device manager. If you've never done this, click on the start menu and type in device manager, and it should appear in the results. If your laser isn't being identified but your computer sees that it's connected, it may appear with a yellow triangle or a red icon on it in the device manager, or it may appear as an unidentified device. In my case, I know that my Atom Stack laser is being identified because it's appearing under the common LPT ports. My CO2 laser appears here as well. In the case of G code and DSP controllers, Anytime I've ever experienced a driver related issue such as that, I would go to Device Manager, right click on the device, and allow Windows to update and search for a new driver. At least for me, this is rather rare to occur. However, anytime it has happened, that has resolved the issue for me. If that doesn't work for you, however, reach out to the manufacturer or go to their website and oftentimes you'll see a driver and software section that you can download the most up-to-date driver for your hardware. With that completed, we've now gone through the download, installation, activation, and adding of your devices to Lightburn. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Gantry Crash Course. If you got value out of this episode, smash the like button, let everybody know the content's great. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and if you're interested in seeing future episodes of the Crash Course or other fun content, Hit that bell icon so you get notified as soon as it goes live. If you want to join the LA community or just hang out and chat, there's links to the Discord and Facebook group down below. You'll also find a link to the Laser Master Academy, whose members I'd like to thank for making this all possible. We love learning and sharing with you all, and we couldn't be here in this capacity without such an amazing community. We hope to see you over in one of our communities, and I hope you enjoy the next episode of the Lightburn for Gantry Crash Course. Oh,
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh,